Martin, I'm going to describe you as the veteran around this table. How did you get into the industry? I had a, I went to Leeds Uni and uh, I had a graduate job as a, a sales and marketing graduate. And long story short, I worked in America for a year, came back to do this uh, graduate job and um, I just hated it. I can't really. imagine you doing sales. No. You have to say it. what people want to hear when you're in sales, don't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't sell. I um, just started working part-time in a local pub in Headley, the Skyrack. I was pub manager there when I was age 22 and I was Whitbread's youngest manager at the age of 22 and uh, took that pub to be the first ever million pounds Whitbread's ever done. What about you? What how was your first leap into doing this for a living? Well, I was kind of in between jobs really and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my, myself. I worked in music before. Uh, food and drink and then I was a teaching assistant in between okay um, which you know was great but it wasn't for me <laughs> um, I was I was really into beer rail ale craft beer so nine years ago and um, yeah decided to kind of make the leap of faith and open my own spot in Bradford which was called the Sparrow and what do you remember about that time that first time when you were open how were you feeling were you, were you confident did you no I was scared I kept having like nightmares like I was going to get have the like anxiety nightmares that like was going to go horribly wrong um, but you know it ticked over nicely and that's how I got to meet Mayor um, from him coming in the pub and then we opened Bundabus together so it opened more opportunities and doors I guess. Maya how did that work in your mum and dad's restaurant because obviously the staff were family. Yeah, yeah. For them the path and journey was certainly not me or, me or my brother being in this industry you know they really the stereotypical doctor, accountant, you know, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they're the first generation to come to the UK. So it was, for them, it was right, we're going to graft so that you may, you know, use your head a bit more. Or, you know, that was their mentality. So me and my brother both went to uni and it was just a case of, well, I wasn't very good at that at all. So I was just <laughs> like, you know what, I really kind of see something really special in, um, in kind of what they've developed. The deli that I grew up in, that service, that community, and being very casual and informal, that's the bit I really missed. And, and, and sort of being in Bradford, um, having an interest in beer, Marco's business, it kind of just, it, it kind of just worked, you know? It made complete perfect sense that we had both ends, both elements that were um, so specialist that we really gave a shit about. And um, it, 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 it's really weird, because I think it, it's definitely partly destiny. I think it was. Um, I think it was written that I should be in this industry, and I can't see myself doing anything else really. Jocelyn, what made you get into the industry? I'd always wanted to feed people. I didn't know exactly what format it would be in, so I'd gone to uni, did five years doing earth sciences and geography. When I finished, I got a job as a restaurant host, minimum wage. Wow. Loved every minute of it. Um, what was the minimum wage back then? Do you remember? God, I think. I was doing 90 hour weeks and being Three paid shillings. 18 grand, yeah. so... Wow. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty that's that's good. Yeah. That's a big, he's like, all right. <laughs> I, like, I think I was on about four grand when I started. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. 16s and a yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was a bit older than 16, yeah, oh, so yeah. I was early 20s. Well, you've been uni and everything, haven't you? Yeah. And Josh, yeah. was that Ithaca? It was indeed, yeah. So my, my parents, after five years at uni and getting a first, were obviously delighted to hear that I'd gone to somewhere that was clearly a money pit and, <laughs> and, and I was on minimum wage, but um, I, I loved every minute of it because the food was incredible and as much as the uh, the operation was bonkers learning how to not do things I think is as good an education as you can get. So how did you get into it then what was the first step from wanting to be a chef to training to be a chef? Well first and foremost I, I was at school and the careers advisor said what do you want to do? I said I want to be a chef. He said he's stupid. I was like no I don't think so uh, and he was he, he obviously pointed out the social aspects and all that kind of stuff but so not really bothered, I just, you know, I'm, I'm clever enough to do something that I want to do. Um, so, but other than that, I was like, well, I ain't got a clue. So they put me, told me about like modern apprenticeships and things like that. Um, and it really, it was my mum that, that sorted me out because I, we decided to go uh, and do a modern apprenticeship. Paul Heathcote, as we were talking about before, Tom um, had his empire at the time. And he just set up the Paul Heathcote School of Excellence which was a, a modern apprenticeship scheme. Uh, but that was only one day a week, so then you had to have a full-time job as well. Um, and I ended up, which is another long story, getting a job at Bridgewater Hall with Robert Kidsby at the time. Yeah, Robert Kidsby. Okay, um, do you know, I've never heard a story about a careers advisor that ends with, and then they got me my perfect <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs>